Hey yogis, welcome back. My name is Flo and thanks so much for tuning in and wanting to practice today. All you need for today's class is your mat. You don't really need any blocks or so. It's good to have them close by, but you don't really need it specifically for this practice. That's gonna be a nice, well-rounded vinyasa flow class. So we'll, we will move in all directions. We'll work on upper body strength, standing poses, also some core. And we're just gonna stretch and lengthen and strengthen in all the directions. Sounds good? Let's just jump right into it. Come onto your back whenever you're ready. And just take a moment here, half shavasana. The legs are bent, the feet are on the ground. Bring the heels close to your hips. Bring one hand on your belly, one hand on the chest. Take a moment to arrive. Give yourself permission to be here practice. You are already on your mat, so you can already be proud of yourself for doing the work, for doing the practice, and for not just sitting at the desk watching that video without actually doing it. You're actually doing it, so I'm very proud of you. Take a couple breaths here to arrive, to feel the body. Notice what is touching the ground. mentally get ready for the practice, get ready to move, and know that you can always modify, you can always leave something out, you can also always add something in. I see all of this just as suggestions, but eventually I want you to decide if you take those or not. Make this practice your own. Be honest to yourself, to your own body, Let's stop pretending we're someone or something else. Work with the body you have today. Be patient with it. Know that every practice is different. Some days you feel really great, really open in certain positions. Some days you don't feel very open. But we're still doing our best. Feel the breath. Feel the air coming in and out through the nose. A couple breaths here. And I want, you, I want to remind you that the breath is really the core of the practice. The breath is what makes this yoga. Otherwise, it's just movements and poses. What we want to do is use the breath as a guide to connect to that calm, peaceful state within, no matter how challenging or how strong the poses, the movements will be. So if you feel like you're losing your breath and it's hard to breathe, take a break. Bring the heels closer to the hips. Bring the arms down to the sides. Press into the heels. Lift your hips up for bridge pose. Keep a gap between the chin and the chest so that you protect the neck. So let's start with activating the glutes. Press into those heels. Lift your hips up high. So we're less looking for the back bend. We're more looking for that glute activation. That means flex your butt cheeks as much as you can. I know it's a very scientific term, but I think... Everyone gets it. So engage those glutes, lift up higher up. Keep the breath going. Very good. Extend the right leg up towards the ceiling. Keep the hips lifted. Imagine you're standing with the right foot on the ceiling. So the right toes are pointing down towards you. Then you start to lower the hips down. Let them hover above the ground. Inhale, lift back up. Let's do two more. Lower down. And lift. Exhale, lower. Inhale, lift. Very good. Back to bridge pose. Right foot back down. Keep the hips lifted. Let's do the other side. Left leg up. Straighten the left leg. Imagine you're standing on the ceiling. Lift the hips up high. Then with your breath, lower down. Let them hover. Inhale, lift up. Exhale, lower. And lift. One more. Lower down. Let it hover. And lift up. Very good. Back to bridge pose. Last little bit. Squeeze those glutes, lift your hips up high. Very good, Rela relax, release the hips down. Keep the feet where they're at, just bring the knees together. <coughs> start to grab behind the legs or the shins and you start to rock forward and back. Eventually you find your way into boat pose. We're not here for too long, just a little bit to warm up the core, to get the energy going, to activate the energy, to free the body so the energy can flow more freely through the body as we go through this practice. 
with your hands forward, pull the shoulder blades together, point the toes forward, hold it here. If this is uncomfortable for the lower back or for your hip flexors, totally fine to set the heels down. Just listen to your own body. If you want to keep going, start to extend the legs forward, the upper body back for low boat. The heels are hovering, point the toes, shoulder blades are lifted, maybe arms up and over your head. Reach the arms forward again, come back up to boat. Let's do four more just like this, lower down, low boat, maybe arms overhead. Reach the arms forward and boat, three more. Try to push your lower back into the ground as much as you can. Not everyone can naturally, but try to work towards that. Two more. You start to shake perfectly fine. Just stay with the breath. Last one. And reach forward. Cross your ankles, roll over the knees, come into a tabletop. Now after that core activation, let's lengthen the front side of the body. Untuck the toes, shoulders over the wrists, hips above the knees. Take a deep breath in, arch your back, look forward. Exhale, round your back for cat pose. Inhale, arch your back, look forward, cow pose. Exhale, round for cat. Come back to neutral. This time, come onto your toes. Slide the hands back towards the knees, just a little bit. With your arms straight, you send the hips back. Now you feel the toes and the feet stretch. That's what we're looking for. With the arms straight, you shift forward as far as you can so that you feel the wrists, then send the hips back. Rock forward and back a couple more times. So we're moving forward and back, stretching out the wrists when you come forward and the feet and the toes when you come back. Let's do two more rocking forward and back. Beautiful, come back to neutral. The fingertips are now pointing away from another. Lean to your right side and to the left. Keep the arms straight, stay on the toes. A couple more each side. So before we put any weight on the hands, you want to warm up the wrists always. So even if you do your own practice, I highly encourage you to take that time to warm up the wrists. Beautiful job. Now for the last one, the fingertips are pointing towards the knees. Send the hips back, let the palms lift up. Maybe bend one elbow, then the other. Just feel the forearms, feel the fingers, feel the wrists. Keep the breath going. Sit on the heels, try to stay on the toes. Shake your arms out, shake your hands out. Take a deep breath in through the nose. Open mouth, let it all go. Reach your arms higher up, inhale. Open mouth, exhale. Reach your arms up even higher, inhale. Open mouth, exhale. <sighs> Wonderful job. Let's come into a tabletop again. We're staying on the toes. You press into your palms, mostly press into the inside part of your hands, right between the index finger and the thumb. There should be no gap between the inside of the hand and the ground. Anytime you're having contact with the ground and that helps to keep the wrist safe. You want to bring most of the weight down into the inside part of the wrists, which is very stable and not on the outside, which is very weak. So tabletop, press into your palms, round your back, really push into the ground, then lift your knees up just half an inch or a centimeter, depending where you're at. Stay on the toes, keep the breath going. You're really rounding the back, pressing into the palms. Keep that left knee lifted, keep it hovering, draw the right knee to the chest, round your back even more. Hold and breathe, press into your palms, Look to that left knee, perhaps lower it even more down so it's hovering above the mat. Then step the right foot back, tabletop with the knees lifted. I like to call this turbo cat because it's kind of like cat pose but a little bit stronger. Keep that right knee lifted, left knee to the chest, other side. Hold, breathe, push the ground away. Round your back more, lift the knee higher up. Back to Turbo Cat. Very good. Breathe. Send the hips up and back. Downward facing dog. First downward dog of this class. So walk your dog. Take your time to get there. I practiced a lot the last couple days and did some good rounds in jiu-jitsu yesterday. So my calves are pretty sore. So I feel that a lot. So I probably keep my knees bent a little bit more today. 
And so that's what I mean with checking in with the body. No need to force anything. Just work with what you have and what feels good. Very good. Hide your heels behind the ankles. The, the, the feet are as wide apart as the hips and the hands are as wide apart as the shoulders. Very good. Move the chest towards the thighs. Lengthen and open the shoulders. Connect to the breath. Start to walk the feet forward between the hands. Take a deep breath in, lift up halfway. Exhale, forward fold and down. A couple more like this. Inhale, lift up halfway. Exhale to fold. Inhale to lift. Exhale, fold. Very good. Bend your knees. Roll up through the spine to standing vertebrae by vertebrae. Deep breath in. The arms reach up. Exhale, forward fold and down. Inhale, lift up halfway. And exhale, fold. Bend your knees. Roll up. And exhale, forward fold and down again. Last deep breath in, lift up halfway. Exhale, plank pose, hands down, step the feet back. Tuck your tailbone and engage the core. So usually what I see in plank pose, and this is, I stress this so much in all of my classes and videos. Plank pose oftentimes is people let the chest sag down, the shoulder blades come together, the upper body is kind of straight. Horrible plank, not very efficient. So push the ground away. You're not just resting here, resisting gravity holding, you're actually pushing. Then you lift the hips higher up, tuck your tailbone, engage the core. So this is more of a plank. Use your fingertips to press and grip into the ground. Externally rotate the arms. Take a deep breath in, shift forward, come high onto your toes. Exhale, bend your arms, chaturanga. Straighten your arms again, plank. Beautiful job, your first push-up today. Shift forward, bend your arms, lower all the way down. <sighs> Untuck the toes, press into your palms, cobra pose. Flex your glutes, squeeze the shoulder blades together. Lift the chest higher up, breathe. The elbows are in, almost touching the rib cage. Last deep breath in. Exhale, release everything down. Wonderful job. Bring your hands underneath the shoulders. Come onto your toes. Now you decide if you want to lift the knees up as well. I will. Maybe you won't. Listen to the body and then straighten your arms. Plank pose. Downward facing dog. Very good. Start to roll through the spine forward. Plank pose. Bring the feet together, big toes are touching. From this plane, come onto the knife edge of the left foot. Lift your right arm up for a side plank on the left side. Press into your left hand first, lift that left hip higher up. Then you lift the right leg up off the left as well. Breathe and balance here. Slightly internally rotate the right foot so you activate that medial glute on the right side. Look to the front of the uh, mat, to the right corner. Draw the right knee to the right armpit. Look to that front right corner of the mat. Step the right foot there. Both hands are inside the right foot. Lizard lunge. Move the hips around. Let's do five breaths here. I really like to do circles. Maybe that feels good for you too. What also feels nice is to bounce. If you want to come onto your forearms, of course, go ahead. Very good. Let's all meet back on the hands. With your right hand, you reach behind you. Then with your right hand, you reach forward towards the right foot. At the same time, you straighten both legs. So it's kind of like a pyramid pose, but the left heel is lifted. Bend your right knee again, reach the right arm back. Exhale, reach forward, straighten both legs. Very good. Let's do three more. Inhale to reach back. Exhale, reach forward. Last one. 
Very good. Rebend the right knee, lizard or lunge, set the left knee down. Bend your right leg, your left leg. With your right hand, you reach for the left foot. You can also use a, a strap, throw it over the foot. If you grab the foot, grab the pinky toe side, gently pull that foot towards your hips, and send the left hip more forward towards the left hand. Engage your left butt cheek, because we're kind of in a back bend here, you're also kind of in a twist. And we're stretching the left thigh, so tons of stuff going on in the body. Focus and feel the, feel the breath. And slowly release, lizard lunge again. Both hands inside the right foot, lift your left knee up, three-legged dog, right leg up and back. Very good. Keep the breath going. Move your chest towards the left thigh. Come high onto your left toes. Inhale. Exhale, right knee to the left armpit. Right knee, left armpit. Press into your palms. Shift the shoulders more forward. Lift your knee higher up into the armpit. Round your back. Now bring the left heel down. Extend the right leg through for a starfish. Reach your left arm up. Both heels are down at the ground. Stay on that right palm. Keep the legs straight. Start to lower the hips down towards the right hand. Let them hover above the ground. Lift your hips back up. Let's do two more. Lower down. And lift. Very good. One more. And lift up. Beautiful job. Left hand down. Plank pose. Step the right foot back. On your inhale, shift forward. Come high onto your toes. Exhale, bend your arms. Chaturanga. Inhale to plank. Exhale, lower all the way down. Interlace your hands behind the back. Untuck your toes. Lift your chest up. Look down to the ground. Squeeze the shoulder blades together. And reach your hands more towards the heels. Three more breaths. And release. Very good. Hands underneath the shoulders again. Come onto your toes. Maybe lift the knees. Straighten your arms. Plank. Downward facing dog. Start to roll through the spine forward. Plank pose. Shoulders over the wrists. Bring the feet together. Big toes are touching. Side plank on the right side. Reach your left arm up. Press into your right hand. Engage those glutes. Lift your right hip higher up. Lift your left leg up off the right as well. Internally rotate the left foot. Keep breathing. Keep pressing into the right palm. Use your right fingertips to grip into the mat. Draw the left knee to your left armpit. Look to the front left corner of the mat. Step the foot there. Lizard lunge. Both hands down to the ground. Move around. A couple of breaths here. Maybe bounce up and down. You might feel nice. Maybe come onto your forearms. Beautiful. Reach your left arm behind you. Start to straighten both legs as you reach the left hand towards the left foot. Rebend the left knee, reach back. And reach forward. Reach back. Let's do three more. Reach forward, straighten both legs. Reach back, bend the left knee. Last two. And last one. Rebend the left knee, there's a lunge, set the right knee down. Bend your right leg with your left hand, reach for the right foot. Grab the pinky toe side or use a belt. Then pull that foot towards your right hip. Send your right hip more forward and down towards the right hand. Breathe, engage your right glute. 
look over the left shoulder if you can. And release. Left hand down, lizard lunge. Extend your left leg up and back, three-legged dog. Press into your palms, move the chest towards the right thigh. Keep the breath going. Inhale, come high into your right toes. Exhale, left knee to the right armpit. Hold it there. Shift more forward. Lift the knee higher up. Keep the breath going. Starfish pose. Extend the leg through. Right heel down. Right arm up. Press into your left hand. Lift your hips up high. Engage those glutes. And so now you stay on the heels. You let only the toes lift up as you lower down. Let the hips hover and come back up. Lower. And lift. One more lower. And lift. Beautiful plank pose. Both hands down, both feet down. Tuck your tailbone, engage the core. Shift forward, inhale. Exhale, chaturanga. Straighten your arms, plank. Let's do one more. Shift forward, bend your arms, chaturanga. Hold it here for five, four, three, two, and one lower all the way down. Untuck the toes, extend your arms out to the sides. Lift the chest, the hands, the shoulders. Lift that upper body up. Squeeze your glutes. Kiss the shoulder blades together on your back. The thumbs are pointing down. Lift your hands higher up than the shoulders. Breathe for five, four, three, two, and one. Release. Shake out the hips. Beautiful job. So now the option here to come into upward facing dog. Bring your hands underneath the shoulders. Stay with the toes untucked. Bring the feet wide apart. You can actually back bend more the more the uh, wider the feet are apart. If the feet are together, based on how the spine moves, you cannot back bend that much. Feet apart. Press up. Externally rotate the arms. Pull the shoulders back. Look forward. Flex your butt cheeks as much as you can. Breathe. Slowly move the hips up and back, but stay on the tops of your feet. So you're almost in a down dog, but you're on the tops of the toes, tops of the feet. Then you shift forward, roll through the spine for upward dog again. Flex your butt cheeks. Let's do three more. Up and back to that down dog on the tops of the feet. Forward to up dog. Last two. Last one. Downward dog is where we meet, so you move up and back. Stay on the tops of your feet as long as you can. In that last second, you come onto the toes. Beautiful job. Let's all come into a seated position. Take your time to get there. The option to walk the feet forward. You can also float forward. You can also handstand. Let's just all meet there. Set the hips down. Feet down, keep the knees bent, hands go behind you, the fingertips are pointing towards you. Lift your hips up, reverse tabletop. Rock side to side, rock forward and back. We're just targeting the shoulders, especially the front side of the shoulders, as well as the glutes. 
Now shift all the way forward, set the hips all the way down to the ground. Don't move your hands. Once you're here, take a deep breath and lift your chest up. Exhale, bend your arms. Inhale, lift the chest. Exhale, bend your arms, maybe close your eyes. Inhale, lift the chest. Exhale, bend your arms. <coughs> Release, reach both arms forward. Come onto your back. For happy baby, grab the outside edges of your feet or grab behind the knees, whatever feels better and whatever is more accessible for you. Once you're here, keep the lower back and the shoulders on the ground and move your knees closer to the armpits. If you like, you can straighten one leg as far as you can, as far as it's accessible. And perhaps the other leg. Very good. Bring both feet down to the ground. Cross your right ankle over the left thigh. Reach with that right arm through that hole you create. Grab either behind the left leg or grab the left shin. Keep that right foot flexed. If you look to your right foot, make sure the toes are pointing to the right side. Once you have that, then you can pull your legs closer towards your chest. Relax your head down. Breathe. And as you can see, I like to keep both feet flexed to just protect the knees breaths here. Breathe into the sensation in your right outer hip and as long as you feel it there it's all good. Slowly release. Both feet down, lift your hips up, bridge pose. Release the hips down, other side, cross the left ankle over the right thigh. Reach through, grab behind the leg or grab the right shin. Flex both feet, pull your legs towards your chest. Relax your head down, perhaps close your eyes. Couple breaths here. release both feet down lift your hips up bridge pose again one more time I like to move the hips side to side keep the hips lifted keep the glutes engaged and release the hips down keep the feet by the edge just bring the knees together relax here for a moment one hand on the belly one hand on the heart slowly start to relax the body relax the breath getting ready for our final pose of this practice, which is Shavasana. And extend the legs forward. Bring the arms out to the sides, palms are facing upwards. Take all the space you want and need. Relax your body. Let it melt into the ground, let it be kind of heavy, relaxed. Especially relax the toes and the feet. Sometimes we hold some, some tension there. It's not needed right now. Relax your breath. That means just let your breath come back to its natural rhythm. Without changing it, without controlling it, just be. Be here now. Shavasana is a very important pose. You never want to skip. So I encourage you to stay here for a couple of minutes. Maybe put some nice music on, or maybe you have already some nice music going. I want to take that time to relax and give the body the opportunity to go through all the things, the changes it needs to go through after a practice like this. 